sitting. Sorry, give me one second. I'm sitting down as we speak. And then, Sister Jadea, I'm actually going to make you um, co-host so that you can admit the people in the, um, the waiting room. Yes, ma'am. I see Sister Kim is here. Good to see you, ma'am. Are you signing from your car today? Oh, my goodness. We have interpreted. We have interpretation today. Alhamdulillah. Yes, I, there's a graduation party going on, so I stepped out so I could make sure I was present and praise oh, you. Okay. So, uh, I hope y'all don't mind. <laughs> we don't should mind we, at we, all. Should I pin Sister Kim? Sister Nisa? Yes, please. Yes. yes no. All right, Brother um, Demetrius, let us begin. Yes, ma'am. Attention prayer. Surely. I'm being turned to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to him who has originated the heavens and the earth. And I am not from among the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and of this I am commanded. And I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thine servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess of my faults. Please grant me protection against all of my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me unto the best of morals, for none guides unto the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful and make the true followers of Muhammad successful as thou did make Abraham <clears throat> and the true followers of Abraham successful. Surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst forever. And though Allah bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. Surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst forever. Amen. 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 In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that Allah intervened in our affairs in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. I further bear witness that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is in fact the exalted Christ and our Mahdi. And I bear witness that with their two hands, they made a beautiful serpent, a beautiful divine guide, teacher, Messiah, and Jesus in our midst today. And I'll our Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I'd like to greet you in the greeting words of peace and paradise of As-salamu alaykum. Welcome to the one year anniversary Zoom conference or master call conference. This is day one, guess one. We have a whole beautiful week ahead of us. Um, the great part about it is if you registered, you are registered for the whole week. So you could just use this same um, link and password to come right back in uh, tomorrow, come right back in on Tuesday, come right back in on Thursday, <laughs> coming for the finale on Friday. So um, up first, we have our illustrious student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad who is a humble servant of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He has his doctorate's degree in Islamic religion, religious studies and Islamic studies. Did I get that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Praise be to Allah. And one fun fact, because I was watching this in the Savior's Day a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago. And this is when the minister brought um, Dr. Wesley on and he um, gave him his, his praise for writing his what's that thing that you were after you know what it is the dissertation, dissertation. yes the dissertation on master fraud muhammad and he got his doctorate's degree so that says all that needs to be said it could not be argued and all praises due to allah who came in the person of master fraud muhammad like the minister told us to say it right or savior his day so with no more from myself i would love to bring on our student minister dr wesley muhammad how are you? I am jitters, but I am blessed and highly favored. Praise belong. I'm honored to be here, dear sister. The invitation to um, speak to the youth of our nation about our savior um, is very important. Um, 
honored to have been extended this invitation and this opportunity. I can't imagine any better um, thing to be doing to spend my time than to talking about our Savior with our nation's youth. Okay, I'll praise them to a lot. So do you want to go ahead and get right into the questions? Sure. Like, yeah? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, sir. I thought you wanted to do like a little 15, 20, but... Well, I will. Okay. That's fine. I, I, I can open with some... I'm happy to put some thoughts on the table, open with some thoughts. The importance of this particular endeavor. Um, one, the youth directing their attention, their focused attention on the savior is very important, especially at this hour, 2021. The thing for Savior's Day 2021 was and is how strong is our foundation? Can we survive? Will we survive? The Executive Council of the Nation of Islam decided on that theme with the approval of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan because we know that the flood is coming. We are poised right now where the nation of Islam was poised at the beginning of 1975. The assault on the foundation of the nation of Islam, which is Allah and the personal master, Fard Muhammad, was always inevitable, was always imminent. Now it's here. I don't know who saw. Mm. Abdurrahman Muhammad's presentation a couple of days ago on our savior. Now, of course, Abdurrahman Muhammad is the narrator of the Netflix special, Who Killed Malcolm X? Abdurrahman Muhammad is an Orthodox Muslim with an anti-Nation of Islam agenda. The lifting up of Malcolm X and the disrespecting, the diminishing or attempted diminishing of the savior will be and are the two-pronged approach to the attack on the Nation of Islam exalting Malcolm and diminishing Allah in the personal master, Far Muhammad. So it's important that we all in the nation of Islam get shored up in our faith in the savior, buttressed by inadequate knowledge and understanding of the savior so that we don't get disturbed, I, I will close with this, an example of how the assault will come and how it can disturb the high, but how it, how we should not be disturbed. You know, the case of Paul Guthrie, I don't know who on this call is familiar with the Paul Guthrie attempt at scandalizing the savior master, Bart Muhammad. But for a long time, Paul Guthrie, who made the claim, made a series of claims about master Bart Muhammad, specifically that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad misrepresented his origins by saying Master Far Muhammad was a Muslim born in Arabia who came to America to teach the black man and woman Islam. Paul Guthrie 
claim that Master Fard Muhammad was an Indian Buddhist. He was not born in Arabia. He was born in India. He was not a Muslim. He was a Buddhist. He didn't teach black people in America the life-giving teachings of Islam. He taught black people in America Buddhism. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad misrepresented his teacher. Why I cite this is because Paul Guthrie's claims were very popular in large segments of the black community, but very specific segments of the black community. All of those segments who before Paul Guthrie, they had hate, jealousy, and envy against the nation of Islam. All of those groups latched on to Paul Guthrie's claims. And he became the champion of the nation of gods and earths, Paul Guthrie. He became the champion of many in the new Black Panther Party. Paul Guthrie and his claims regarding our savior even got his hooks into many believers in the nation of Islam. He was smart, he was good with this language and he was good with his videography. And sister and family, we know that you don't have to be too smart today if you are skilled with videography, if you are a great video magician, you can have black people believing anything. So that's what he was now. If for Paul Guthrie had a good run for about 15 years. Of those, about four years, I tried, he and I tried to negotiate a public debate. I reached out to Paul Guthrie, warning to engage his claims publicly and vet his claims publicly. Of course, this was when I was debating. I don't debate anymore because the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan has instructed us, we don't debate. We can dialogue though, we can discuss. So I'm inviting people for fruitful discussions now, <laughs> but we can't debate, but that was, that's now. Then I reached out to Paul Guthrie for a live public debate here in Chicago. He didn't want it, he didn't want his claims to be publicly aired and vetted. So it took four years before we resolved the issue, but the issue is resolved now. You can't Google Paul Guthrie and Master Fart Muhammad. You can Google it, but his series of videos in which he made his claims are nowhere to be found. If you go to his YouTube page, he has taken those videos down because once we release our, since he would not engage us live, we issued a series of video responses, academic video responses to each and every aspect of his claim. We dismantled the Paul Guthrie deception. So today he had to remove all of his videos. So it's as if a nuisance that was once on our post for so long, and he was a nuisance to many a Muslim. But now it's as if he never existed. It's as if his claims were never made. I cite that for this reason. Never do we have to fear the scandalizing charges of the wannabe scandalizer of our savior. 
never. It doesn't matter how they are packaged. The nation of Islam absolutely is the truth. We have the truth. And it's not just rhetoric when we say it can be proven in no limit of time. During the period I was allowed to be on the debate circuit, we have proved in no limit of time. And it is still being pro proved by many in many different ways, but never do we have to be doubtful. Never do we have to be impressed Certainly never should we be fearful when we hear and see the flood coming from the mouths of the disbelievers. Our foundation is strong. In fact, our foundation is impeccable. We need only anchor our faith in the impeccable foundation of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And 2021 is the absolute right time for us to be engaging in this process. Crazy to cool. lot. That was a beautiful opening. Glad you did it. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't go straight into the question. I had no idea who Paul Guthrie was. And you're absolutely right. I Googled him while you were speaking and there's nothing to be seen. Yeah. There's nothing to be seen. There's That's a lesson in that, which is why I cited it, because so many people were impressed by him. Mm. And as he and I haggled over a debate, we were on, we were supposed to be on Lord Jamar and Rod Diggis pod Godcast. Mm. We were supposed to have our discussion on the podcast, but he wiggled out. And people thought we, the nation, and me in particular, were mm. taking an air. Mm. Not knowing the background that I have been barking up that Paul Guthrie tree for years, but he never wanted to have a public airing of his claims. He wanted only to produce a video conversation because that can be totally controlled. That's right. Eventually, I conceded his desire and we had that video contest and Allah blessed us with victory and he disappeared. Thus the Quran mm. in the presence of truth Fasha vanishes. It doesn't just stand down. Falsehood vanishes. And That's right. falsehood is forever a vanishing thing. So Paul Guthrie, after being a nuisance on our post for so long, now that we have officially responded, he has vanished. Mm. Falsehood is want to do. Praise me to Allah. Praise me to Allah. So we're going to go into the first question. And upon... Um, Dr. Wesley's request that we could get some questions from the audience as well. So I'm going to mix and match and hopefully we could go a question from the Google Doc, which is also from the audience, um, a question from the Google Doc and also a question from the active audience right now. That would be um, perfect and just going back and forth with that. Um, so our first question is, someone asked, I was thinking about the Quran verse we recite often that says Allah begets not nor is he begotten how would you respond to someone who would say that we're contradicting ourselves being that master Fard Muhammad I'm trying to say it right has a mother and his father was Allah before him yes an excellent question we are not contradicting ourselves if we understand what that verse in Surat al-Ikhlas is referencing. Mm. He begets not, say he allows one God. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Our great angel of the nation of Islam, our great scientist, brother Jabril Muhammad, he has given us 
on the authority of his teachers, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable Minister Farrakhan, he has given us a proper understanding mm -hmm. of that verse. Actually, dear sisters and brothers, he begets not, nor is he begotten, points to two different manifestations of God. Mm. It's in the verse proclaiming the unity, Shratal Iklas, say he Allah is one because the two gods mm. that are referred to are one God. He begets not is one God, nor is he begotten is another God. Mm. This single line or verse in that passage points to, if you will, the Alpha and the Omega. The mm. Alpha being the creator, the first God to emerge from triple darkness, he was not begotten. He had no mother. He had no father. The creator was self-created, self-born. So when the verse references or declares he is not begotten, that is a reference to the alpha, the originator of heavens and the earth. However, the second part which is actually the first statement of that verse, actually points to the Omega, the last God, Master Bard Muhammad. Mm. It is he referred whom the reference is, he begets not. Because the Savior, Master Bard Muhammad, though he has the ability as a human being, to procreate, to reproduce himself, and someday he will. Mm -hmm. He told the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that he would not beget, he would not take a wife, he would not bear children until the black man and woman mm -hmm. have been resurrected. So he has declared that he will beget not. So the verse declares the unity of the two gods, say he Allah is one God, one in the sense that the Alpha and the Omega, mm. two different divine manifestations, but the one God. He begets not, nor is he begotten, brings together the first God and the last God, the creator and the new creator or the perfecter. That's why we can refer to Master Fard Muhammad as the last God, not that there won't be physical gods after him. That's right. But Master Fard Muhammad's role, mm. he is the perfection of the creation of the creator. So his, his physiology, his divinity is the template that no one will alter henceforth. So he's the last God because he's a perfect God and that which is perfect is forever perpetual. It's not slowed down by friction caused by imperfection. So the Alpha and the Omega is referred to in that verse, the two gods, the creator, and the perfector, Allah the first God and Allah the last God, Master Fart Muhammad. Very good, very good. I'm just writing down notes. Uh, we have some questions from the audience. Oh, y'all already blowing me up. Okay, <laughs> so um, our first question from Sister Mariam. Do you know where Master Fart Muhammad's family lived in Arabia? I was wondering if maybe they lived underground. I cannot say I know where his family lived. In the history of the savior given by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
we are told that his father, Alfonso, of course, was from Mecca. And he, the savior himself, was born in Mecca. We know his mother originated in the Caucasus area, likely the Azerbaijan area. But of course, she was brought to heaven, the holy city Mecca, prepared, and they gave birth to the Savior right there in Mecca. Before his birth, his sister was born, presumably right there in Mecca. I have no knowledge of where their current whereabouts might be. I don't know. Um, we know the savior traveled the world. I don't know that his father left Mecca. So all I know is what we know of that matter is what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught. Now regarding underground. I don't, I have no knowledge of that. I am familiar, of course, with the Rishambala, city of Allah, the mm. hidden earth, if you will. Certainly the gods have created entries in, into the earth and exits out of the earth and Mm -hmm. The likelihood of advanced civilization, our advanced civilization, being hidden in some of these um, subterranean areas is likely. However, it's pure speculation right now, as far as I know, uh, with regard to Master Fard Muhammad, if his family retreated to the hidden earth or whatever the case may be. I have no knowledge of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, also, I, I see it's a lot of people on camera, but it's also a lot of people who are not on camera. So for those who are able to get on camera but are feeling bashful, please show your beautiful, shining Black faces. Um, our next question from the Google Doc is, Considering the universal scope of Allah, and as a student, how did you initially respond to expressions of God through beings such as Krishna? Krishna, a famous black god of Hinduism. Mm. You know, when I counter encountered this conversation that took place in the 16th century in Bengal in India, I had no problem with the universality of Allah vis-a-vis -vis Krishna. In the 16th century, there was this famous Hindu saint, Sri Ketanya, Sri S-R-I-K-T-A-N-Y-A, C-A-I-T-A-N-Y-A, the most famous Hindu saint of the time. There's a famous record of a conversation he had. At the time, Bengal was ruled by an Arabian Muslim dynasty, a famous Arabian Muslim dynasty. And one day this Hindu Saint Sri Catania had a conversation with the Muslim Imam, the Sheikh of that dynasty. That Sheikh's name was Abdullah Patan. He was the Muslim Sheikh, the most learned of the Muslims who ruled the area at the time. Sheikh Abdullah Patan and the Hindu Saint Sri Catania, they engaged in this amazing conversation about religion, this Hindu and this Muslim. And their conversation was about a lot of the Quran. And 
at the end of that conversation, they both left the Hindu saint and the Muslim sheikh. They both left that conversation agreeing that according to, to the Quran, Allah, God is black of body. Black of body. As Krishna of Hinduism is black of body. Mm. Or should I say, as Sri Caitanya's Hinduism, his God, Krishna, is black of body. Mm. So too was Sheikh Abdullah Patan, his God of the Quran, Allah, was black of body. And so if you were to Google Allah and Krishna, you will see many statements that Allah is Krishna. Krishna mm. is Allah. It is because Krishna and Allah are part of the universal religion of the black God. Of course, we documented that in our book, the book of God, an encyclopedia of proof that the black man is God. The original religion of the world is the religion of the black God. So we can talk about Krishna of India or Waka of Ethiopia or Men or Asar of Egypt or Enki of Mesopotamia. The whole world believed in and worshiped the black God. We know that his most perfect name beyond his 99 attributes and beyond his thousands of local dialect names, his most perfect name is Allah. And Allah refers to the same black God that the Hindus refer to under the name Krishna. So I had no problem um, encountering any of the dialectical manifestations of the mm. black God Allah. Dialectical as in dialect. I'm not the moon God that needs every people to speak the same dialect. The one that blew the moon mm. from the earth. That's what his problem was. His problem was a problem of dialectical tyranny. He desi desired dialectical tyranny. Mm. Theologically, I never suffered from that. Very good, Zola. Very good. Oh, come on, computer. It almost caught me. So just give me a second. My computer just closed. Oh. In about two seconds, I just don't come back on. We're going to go straight to the chat. Okay, second up. Okay. So, ah, here we go. It's open. Praise be to Allah. So our next question is, oh no, this was from the Google Doc. Excuse me, we're going to the audience. Um, Brother Salim asked the question, can you speak to Master Fraud Muhammad and his family and the current rules of Saudi Arabia? Are they his family? As there was a revolt around 1916 and a new king was put in place. Current rulers, pardon, title. Oh, current rulers. As there was a revolt around 1916 and a new king was put in place. Oh, wait, what, what was it, Sister Jade? So the, 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 are the current rulers of Saudi Arabia family of the of Master Fadid Muhammad? Gotcha. The, thank you. The Ibn Saud family the current dynastic rulers of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, the Arabia of the Saud family. Um, no ma'am, I have no reason to link 
the Ibn Saud or the Saud family to the family of Master Art Muhammad or his father, Alfonso Allah. Alfonso Allah was a jet black Arabian as the original and true Arabians are jet black like Alfonso was. The Saud family is one of many families who are described as Arab, but originated as non-Arab. And so the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says that whites rule Mecca now. Mm. And the Saud family are a family of whites ruling Mecca, very distinct from the family of Alfonso, who's indigenous to Mecca. Now, of course, of mass. The part Muhammad's mother is not indigenous to Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, she comes from the Caucasus Mountains area. So there is a closer, certainly genetic relation, broadly speaking, between the current rulers of Arabia and such foreigners as was originally Master Fat Muhammad's mother, but mm -hmm. I am not saying because I can't say and I don't know that it could be said that there is an actual genetic relation between the white Saud family and the Azerbaijan or Caucasus Mountains family of Baba G, baby G, Master, mm -hmm. so called baby G or Baba G which is likely how her name was pronounced, Baba G, it's a Persian, it's a Persian honorific, actually. Baba G is a Persian honorific. And so, so no, I, I have no reason at all to connect the Saud family with any line of the family of Master Fat Muhammad. I've seen nothing that allows me to do so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise you to Allah. We are now at 100 people in the room. And also, I believe uh, Brother Ilya Rashad has entered the room. So let us welcome him as well. He'll be coming Shout out to my brother sir. Ilya. <laughs> Uh, our next question, we're not going to be able to get through half of these questions. Um, our next one is, let me see. I want to go in order, but I also want to pick some juicy ones. Yeah, don't be, you don't have to be a prisoner to- Can I ask a question? Order. I don't have to be a prisoner? Okay. Um, I like this question. Um, it was actually the last one I believe that you received. Here it is. One second, beloved, we're going to order. Can you put it in the chat, please? Um, in the lecture, Who is God? Part two, you described this as Al Mutadun. Mutadun? Mutadun, the people of the Mahdi. Ah, okay. What is the importance of understanding the Islamicity? of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad according to the classical tradition and the Sunnah in both defending point number 12 and deepening our understanding of it. How has this affected your appreciation for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's representation of his teacher? Yeah, it's, it's critical. Recognizing the legitimate, authentic Islamicity of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and what he taught is absolutely essential. Of course, 1975 happened. The flood that we got swallowed up in was the claim that 
the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad were not Islam. Mm. That we, that he and his followers were and are not true Muslims. And of course, the bludgeon that they used, the Muslim world used to deceive us into accepting that bogus claim that we are not true Muslims, that what we have is not legitimately Islam. The bludgeon that they turned against us was point number 12. Mm. Islam does not acknowledge that God can come in the person of a man. And so all such talk is shirk. It's association or polytheism. And when you are tagged with the sin of shirk, that's a monkey on your back. Mm. It's a scarlet letter on your face that no one wants to go around the Muslim world with and the Muslim world won't allow one to go around with that scarlet letter on our face. But we never had that scarlet letter on our face. We were never guilty of shirk, in fact. As I demonstrated in my dissertation, my doctoral dissertation, the Muslim world with their spook God is guilty of shirk. Mm. It is not God as a man that is shirk. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, God is a man and we just can't make him other than man, lest we make right. him a lesser God. That's right. God, Allah, is a man. Shirk is describing Allah as other than that. Now, we demonstrated that the Islam of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is consistent with the Islam of Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. Yes, the Islam of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it does violence to the Islam of the Muslim world, that is a fact. No one can deny that. But this is also a fact. The Islam of the Muslim world does violence to the Islam of Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah of Arabia. The Islam of the Muslim world today does violence to the Islam of the Holy Quran. Mm. So we have demonstrated that we are the people of the Sunnah, Allah Sunnah, meaning the nation of Islam. That's right. We, with our theology, we are perfectly walking the path, walking the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. I will close with this. In a very important hadith, which is a sound hadith, an authentic hadith, sahi, meaning it's not weak, it's not daif, it cannot be negotiated away. Mm. Muslims or Muslims. We learn a prophet Muhammad who was late for prayer, Fajr the prayer, mm. one morning. And at the last minute, before the sun broke, the Holy Prophet came running out. The Muslims were worried because he was their imam. He was their prayer leader, and they were about to miss Fajr the prayer. Mm. And at the last minute, the prophet came hustling out and he got through the prayer and then he told the Muslims, stay where you are. 
you're not dismissed. Do you want to know what kept me from you this morning? And he commenced to telling them why he was late. He said that last night he was reading the Quran and while reading the Quran, he went to sleep. Mm. And while sleep, he had a vision, not a dream. That's right. Had a vision in which he saw Allah. He said in his vision, and we can say we know it's what's called a proleptic vision. It's a vision in which you see things that will happen in the future. Mm. Prophetic. In the Holy Prophet's vision, he saw Allah. He saw Allah. He said Allah came to him as mm. a man, Shah. And this man that he saw, this Allah that he saw was a man of white skin and black hair and this white skin black haired Allah man said touched him mm. he felt his finger tips on his chest and that touch from this future white skinned black haired Allah mm. the touch to Muhammad, transferred to this Muhammad all of the secrets of heaven and earth. Now, if the Allah who came in a person of a white skinned, black haired man, if that was a future Allah, then the Muhammad whom he touched and transferred the knowledge of the secrets of the heaven and the earth, that was a future Muhammad too. So mm. what we learned is that the prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago, while in Medina, God showed him a vision that will come to pass 1400 years later, showed him a vision of Allah coming in the person. Mm. Of this white skinned, black haired God. We know his name today, Master right. Fark Muhammad. And when this white skinned, black haired Allah comes, he will touch a Muhammad. Mm. And this touching of Muhammad will transfer to him the secrets, the knowledge of the secrets of the universe. That knowledge of the secrets of the universe. It's called Supreme Wisdom, the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I love it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We are the people of the Sunnah. Mm. We are the custodians of the true heritage, the true Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. The Muslim world deviated from the son of the path of the prophet Muhammad, Muhammad. That's why believers, we don't follow them. We cannot follow the East. Mm. The East does not follow the prophet. That's why the East is dominated by the West. We get no guidance from them as they have rejected in their theology. Prophet Muhammad, we must reject them in that theology. Though we love them, they are our brothers. I'm sorry. What is going on? I'm sorry. Go ahead. The son of Islam rises from the West, no longer from the East. So they are to sit down and be taught by us and let us not be so inclined to sit down and be taught by them. We That's have right. the light, they don't. Praise be to Allah. So we're gonna take two more and the people are begging for a part two because the hour just did not do, um, it did not do all that it was supposed to have done. <laughs> so they are smart. begging for more. We have so many questions in the chat. Um, and the chat is on fire right now. If everyone could keep the phone on mute, it would be a blessing um, from Almighty God Allah. Thank you kindly. 
Um, this question I wanted to, sorry to the people that I'm about to skip, but this one is, um, I feel like it's a really super important question. Um, Brother Arthur Hudson asks, how can the relevance of knowing about Master Fard Muhammad stop the killing in the south side of Chicago? Master, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said in, I believe it was, is, our savior has arrived. He quotes Master Fard Muhammad saying this, they are so happy. Presumer, I'm assuming that they here are the scientists. Master Far Muhammad said, they are so happy that now we can teach you that the black man is God. In truth, what we need to know in Southside Chicago is not just that Master Fard Muhammad is God, but that the black man is God, meaning them. They need self-knowledge first. That's right. Knowledge of who they are, because it is who they are that makes this violence such a terrible thing. It's not really who Master Fat Muhammad is that makes Southside violence such a tragedy. It's who they are who's, who's killing each other mm. that makes that act so tragic. The savior came to give us that knowledge that will raise us in soul. It's important that we understand point number 12 in this broader context. The reason point number 12 is not an illustration of Christian incarnation theology. Mm. People make the mistake and lump us with the Christians and assume that when we say in point number 12, Allah, I came in a person, a master Fat Muhammad. And this is similar to the Christian saying God came down as Jesus. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. There's a fundamental difference. Christian incarnationalism, Christian doctrine of incarnation says that God, the father is a spook. And at a particular point in history, he condescended. He became lower than himself mm. in becoming a man. So prior to the birth of Jesus, prior that God was not a man, that is not our teaching. Prior to the birth of Master Far Muhammad, the black man was God. So his divinity, the divinity of Master Fard Muhammad must be understood in the context of the larger theology. Mm. God is a man and man is God. Mm. So on Southside Chicago, we don't start with God is a man. We start with man is God, meaning you, bro, you God and he's God over there. Whether you're on 63rd or whether you're on 79th. That's right. The black man is God. So, and it's also necessary for us as Muslims to understand point number 12 in this broader context. So we don't make the other Christian error, right? Because the crit for the Christians, Christ is a singular event. God becoming man is a singular event, never mm. happened before and never to repeat it. So Christ becomes someone to be worshiped rather mm. than someone to be followed. The point of Christ's divinity is not for Christ to be worshiped. 
because he's some spooky man god up there that we cannot achieve. No, that's not Islam. Christ is God. And if we follow the way of Christ, we will be God like Christ. And so the scripture says that when he comes, we will be made in the twinkling of an eye like him. See, that's the difference between Islam and Christianity. The Christ is God. We don't right. argue with the Christians on that point. But the practical application of that theological truth is different. For them, Christ is God. That means we worship him. We eat pork. We live savagely. We live riotously and do whatever we want to our body, mind, and spirit. It's fine if we worship Christ on Sunday. For us, Christ is God, but not God to worship, God to follow his way. And as perfect as we can follow his way, his example, we can be like him. So I close with, as I said, in the nation of Islam, we do religion not to worship God, we do religion to be God. That's right. Oh, I was writing it down. I thought it was, <laughs> I, was I was trying to write it down. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I wanted somebody put it in the chat so I could uh, tweet it. Uh, we got three minutes left. We, and, um, we do religion. We don't do religion to worship God. We do religion to be God. That's what separates the nation of Islam from every other religious body. Crazy to Allah. Okay. Uh, we have three minutes left. I want to ask this one last one because I think it's perfect for um, how you end it off. And the question was posed. When did Master Fraud Muhammad become Allah? What age or year? How did the most honorable Elijah Muhammad go from messenger to Messiah to Mahdi? So, I would say, and then I will attempt to unpack it. But the second question, it was by evolution. It was a process. The first question by birth, mm. by which I mean this. Master Fard Muhammad was born into the world. The Latin term is, in the academic term, is sui generis, mm. meaning totally unique. There was no human birth similar to his birth in Mecca because he was born to fulfill the desire of the creator 76 trillion years ago. The creator knew that the creation, his creation was imperfect. And he knew that the imperfection that was all around his creation derived from his own nature. The first God was an imperfect God and every God that descended from him has have been imperfect gods, but he wanted perfection. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us about this universal law that when a people have a legitimate desire for something and are deprived of that, their longing for that will give birth to a child with everything in his or her nature to deliver what that people justly desire. Mm. The human family of God has for 76 trillion years desired, longed for the perfection of creation. Mm. That 76 trillion year longing was realized with the birth of Master Fahd Muhammad, February 
26, mm. 1877 in the holy city of Mecca, Arabia. On that day, the first perfect human being was born. The first perfect God was born. So when he came out of his womb, even though he had to study 42 years, he had to go through the normal human processes of growth That's right. and evolution. But he was born with the capacity. He was born with perfection that his growth will only unleash, if you will, on the world. And I'm using unleash in the most positive sense. So he was born as say, even when he did not yet know it because he was too young. Now, of course, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the first born from the dead. Mm. The honor the reason, I believe, Master Fard Muhammad, while he is Number one, he raised up the nation of Islam and he withdrew himself. He left the picture for us, but what most of us may not know is prior to the COINTELPRO counterintelligence program, scandalizing effort of 1963, where they propagated the lie that in the press that our savior is this Wallace Dodd Ford, the drug dealing condit. And we had to answer that false charge. And in answering that false charge, we displayed the picture of the savior. But most Muslims prior to that had never seen the picture of the savior, we did not display it in the temples. The savior did not want our focus on him. He raised up for us the black God. The first one who will lead us to our godhood. We are the dead. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the firstborn from the dead and because of his awakening, because of his evolution, our path will be the path of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We weren't born like Master Father Muhammad was born. We were born like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was born. We were born dead. So he is the black God. And now as Mahdi, we can say God almighty. That's right. Master Father Muhammad made Christ, God Almighty for us. See, he's so humble. That's the beauty of the Savior. He's the most powerful human being that ever lived. If anybody has a right to ego trip, it would be him. That's right. If anyone would have problems with humility, it would probably be him, but he ain't got that problem. So he's the most powerful human being that ever existed yet. He rose up one from the dead, gave him the power and authority and fell back and said, I give y'all him. That's humility. So if the most powerful human being can have power and yet mm. be humble, not be a victim of his ego, dear family, with all of our gifts, We have no warrant That's right. to toss our ego around as if we really got something. We may have a little bit. Mm. You may be popping uh, a little bit, but you ain't popping like the Savior. That's right. So if he don't throw his weight around, and he can, let us walk the earth with power, but let let us walk the earth in humility. That is not contradictory. Mm. 
Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Thank you so, 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 so much, student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. I will absolutely be reaching out for a part two. <laughs> so would, just, you know, wait for that email because it's, it's coming soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Bless you. You do as well as all of your audience. It was an honor. How strong is our foundation? Will we survive? I have every confidence that we will. Praise me to a lot. So if we could come off a of mute and give a la wafa. Thank you, Dr. Wesley. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wesley. Beautiful, beautiful view. All right, I had to go ahead and. <laughs> oh, wait, you're muted, Dr. Wesley. I said, May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you. So now we have up next. And let me catch my emotions because <laughs> I feel water droplets starting to try to come forward from this region of my face. Uh, Cause I just, I'm super excited and super grateful that we're even one year in or about to hit one year in come June 4th, whole year reading our books from our um, nation, our Mahdi, our Messiah. Um, and now we are going into uh, the real fun part. One of the real fun parts of being in a nation of Islam, which is the will. People were so excited about this, getting to know about our great, great mother wheel. Um, so we have our brother Ilya Rashad. This was a master call, actually, the congregation. Um, this was a personal request. They were like, him, <laughs> get him. <laughs> so, so you are already family. You are Uncle Ilya Rashad to us. <laughs> So please bring him on with a beautiful fire emojis in the chat. It's about to get lit. Hey, he got a whole presentation hey, for us and hey. everything. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And thank you for that presentation. Do I need to uh, have like permission to share screen or something like that? Or I'm making you host right now. You should be able to uh, do it. Awesome. And I think I'm going to breeze through this anyway. I'm going to breeze through this um, so that we can deal with whatever questions and answers, you know, deal with the Q&A portion of this thing. And um, first of all, Sister Anissa, thank you so much to you and all the brothers and sisters for this invite. I promise you, I am truly, truly honored honored because you and the youth are doing things like this. And this is what makes um, people like myself, I'm not going to consider myself old, but I'm a veteran yes, to sir. a certain degree, and at least a patriot, to say the least. And to see our young ones, man, really stepping up, taking the mantle of our nation that in and of itself is we couldn't ask for anything more so thank you and thank you for the opportunity to present on this powerful topic which is building off of what our great scholar and brother dr wesley was just sharing which right. deals with the power of a real god That's who right. came in the person of master father muhammad let me begin as we all began uh, in the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I certainly bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Father Muhammad. And I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is indeed that messenger, Messiah, the exalted Christ. And I further bear witness that that brother who is known as the national representative of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is literally shaking up Satan's world. He is the extension of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is that messianic presence in our midst, and that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their holy and righteous names that I once again greet you all with assalamu alaikum. 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 Assalamu alaikum.
Wa alaikum salam, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Indeed, I have the luxury of being able to uh, briefly discuss on this topic that actually has been quite hot in the news. Mm -hmm. And that topic does relate to what others call the UFO phenomena. But for those of us in the nation of Islam, this has never been unknown. Yes, for those of us in the nation of Islam, this was presented to the world by the nation of Islam by that powerful God, Master Father Muhammad. Since we don't have a lot of time, I wanna kinda of get straight to the point. Here's what I would tell some people who don't have any idea about the nation of Islam and its connection to the worldwide UFO phenomena. I put it like this in a super, super, super simple way. We in the nation believe and recognize that that man, Elijah Muhammad, met God in person. God literally came, revealed himself to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Not only did he reveal himself, he revealed those hidden secrets as it is states in the Holy Quran that God who is the Noah of the unseen would make his secrets known to none except a certain messenger whom he chooses. So this is one of the ways that we know how God is present and who God is and who his chosen messenger is because God would literally reveal certain truths, certain secrets that the rest of the world has not known before and he would reveal it to a man that he personally chooses. And so in the initial stages of this relationship, that messenger might seem crazy as hell in the beginning because he would be teaching things revealed to him by God that would seem crazy because the world had not known it before. One of the many truths, and there are a whole lot of them, scientific truths, but one of the many evident truths that Allah revealed, one of these secrets involved the reality of a huge circular plane that we call the mother plane or the mother wheel, along with its 1500 smaller wheel shaped planes that are known as either bomber planes or baby planes. And these planes are the direct result and production of God in person in fulfillment of all the scriptures uh, of the Bible and the Holy Quran, because all of the scriptures prophesy and speak of a God in human form who operates from some type of heavenly vessel in the sky. And while all the scriptures depict God in this manner, you will find that none, nobody, no entity, no group, no religion actually fulfills this or represents a God in human form who operates on a vessel that flies in the sky except the nation of Islam. Let me slow down so Sister Kim can try to <laughs> keep up. So this is one of the ways that we, that God makes himself known. He reveals truths to his chosen messenger so that when those truths become manifest to the world, they will have no excuse not to bear witness that Allah is present. And now we're at a day and time where they can't hide it anymore. So it's all in the news where the government, military defense, military intelligence, the Pentagon, has been forced to admit publicly that these planes exist, planes that were introduced to the world by the nation of Islam. So in this meeting where God came and revealed himself to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, revealed the secrets of God, revealed the knowledge of God, which in and of itself shakes, shook up the world, 
because the fact is God is a man. And as Dr. Wesley just showed and proved as always from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, God is a man and we just can't make him anything other than man. If we try to make him anything other than man, we make him less, we make him an inferior being. So God literally showed this plane with its 1500 smaller wheels, he showed it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He didn't just tell him about it, he pointed it out, showed it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and gave him the secrets and intricate details of what these planes are, who made them, why they were made, where they were made, what they can do, how they will be used in the ultimate destruction of this world and in the salvation of God's people. To give a quick overview of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, we can take this brief excerpt from Message to the Black Man. In Message to the Black Man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad states that the present wheel-shaped plane known as the mother of planes is one half mile by a half mile and is the largest mechanical man-made object in the sky. Again, man-made, not alien-made, not from some extraterrestrials, not from outer space, but it was made, he taught right here on this earth by people. He said, it is a small human planet made for the purpose of destroying the present world of the enemies of Allah. So this plane is literally a warship, among other things. It serves as like the office space of God, if you will. It is described in the scriptures as Allah's throne that's stationed up in the heavens. It's mentioned that in both Bible and the Holy Quran. But one of its purposes is to destroy the enemies of Allah. Yeah. This is congruent <laughs> with what we read of in the scriptures because all those prophecies speak of God in this manner using some vessel that he will use as a warship. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues, the cost to build such a plane is staggering. That lets us know it ain't from out of space. There were people from this earth <laughs> that were used to build it. In fact, the people that were used to build it, it was headed by Master Father Muhammad, God in person. And I'm unto sorry, him- does anybody else see just a black screen where he is? Oh. Um, I do too. Yes, yes. That as well. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> and by the way, if it goes black again, make sure you let me know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but yes, sir. the fact that people were paid in the construction of this lets us know that it's nothing spooky. It wasn't from no aliens and from out of space, but these were people. Uh, the labor force consisted of thousands of people with Master Father Muhammad at the helm. Under him were his special scientists. And under them were just a workload, workforce of thousands of people, many of whom, most of whom had no idea what the ultimate goal of what they were helping out with would be. They just had their own parts to work on and they did their job and they were paid rather handsomely. Uh, so the cost to build such a, a plane is staggering. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues, the finest brains were used to build it. They didn't get no Negroes who didn't have knowledge of self. In fact, the plane, most of its constructions we understand took place either on or near the islands of Japan, right here on this earth. And this is congruent with the scriptures that you read about concerning Ezekiel's wheel. It doesn't say that they came from out of space. It says that they were lifted from the earth, okay? It is capable of staying in outer space six to 12 months at a time without coming into the earth's gravity. There are other places where the Elijah Muhammad said that uh, the mother plane and the wheels would stay out a year, year and a half. They don't have to come back, but they come back to the Earth's gravity. 
It carried 1,500 bombing planes with the most deadliest explosives. So these 1,500 smaller planes accompanying the mother wheel are what people started to see and refer to as flying saucers. These are the main ones that have captured the world where hundreds of millions of people across the globe have cited these things, photographed them, filmed them, uh, that they call UFOs. But the Nation of Islam is what brought this reality to the world. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated very plainly that the mother plane and her work is the display of the power of the mightiest God. Master Father Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. See, this is part of those secret that Allah reveal. He's, it's a display of the mightiest God. It's a display, a physical proof and evidence of his presence and his power in the real world. So just as Allah would reveal his secrets to his chosen messenger, as Allah promised in the Holy Quran, well, this secret would have to involve certain things that were never known to the world before. You will not find where there was any major mass sighting, any official government investigations, any UFO concerns, you won't even find where the term UFO or unidentified flying objects was a thing before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught on this. All of these things took place years later. Master Father Muhammad showed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad his plane in the early 30s, either 31 or 1932. Mm -hmm. All of the major sightings and reports and concerns came afterwards. And so it was because of this that the Nation of Islam was initially in the early 30s, we were called a voodoo cult. Because as we were clashing with the authorities in the Detroit area, some of those clashes warranted the authorities to arrest some of the members of the Nation of Islam, and it was a lot of clashes. We used to beat the hell out of the police all the time. <laughs> but in these clashes, they started to investigate these crazy black people that they had never seen anything like before. They mm. talking this stuff with this strange teaching, teaching that black people are the original people, black people are God, talking about a wheel of plane that can fly in the sky made like a wheel this this is nonsense mm -hmm. <laughs> these people are voodoo cults so all throughout the 30s because of this strange teaching that had never been seen or heard of before they labeled us a voodoo cult and even mm -hmm. in the fbi files all throughout the fbi files they refer to us as mci I'm like, what's that? Sometimes they will refer to NOI, but they would have MCI, which stands for Muslim Cult of Islam. Mm. So, so they had been calling us a cult. But some years later, now this is in the early 30s, but some years later, in 1942, something happened. Something happened in what became the first major encounter with Allah's wheel and the baby planes encountering the U.S. Armed Forces, February 25th, 1942, in a historic episode that became dubbed the Battle of Los Angeles. To give a brief overview, late in the night, a huge circular unknown object was spotted near Los Angeles off the coast. And it warranted the US Armed Forces to gather their artillery, to gather their weaponry and try to intercept this unknown object. 
be mindful, America is in war and at odds with Japan and other countries. So America is already on high alert. So when they see this object that was stationed up in the clouds, I don't know if they saw it on radar or what, but it was reported and they met the object. The object came and positioned itself in the clouds and there were also some smaller crafts that were seen moving erratically, according to the reports and the military reports. It was so uh, such a shock that the military fired over 1,400 rounds of heavy anti-aircraft artillery at this huge circular object that's stationed up in the clouds with over 1,400 rounds of anti-aircraft artillery fired at this thing, it did not budge one bit. This plane, now you can always look this up. This is straight history, you know. This plane that did not budge one bit proved that there was a superior craft and a superior power in the world. It didn't attack the US military. It just let the US military fire their shots at it. And what you see on this video, because part of it, it was captured on video. Be mindful that this is 1942. You don't see clear details of the wheel. You see what looks like clouds. But amidst this cloud is the wheel. And those lights that you see, uh, those little dots that you see, were the anti-aircraft missiles or artillery that were being fired up in the clouds at this wheel. So when they made contact with the wheel, it just made a little like spark. And that's what you see on this video right here, along with those lights that the military had, you know, pointing it up, trying to find out what this thing is. This episode, and after they fired all of these 1,400 rounds at the wheel, the wheel just went off about its business, along with the other few planes that were with it, it just went off. But it left the country in shock. It left the US military perplexed to the point where I think General Knox was his name and President Franklin Roosevelt were at such a high alarm that they did not know what the hell this thing was. They underwent an investigation to try to see, was this Japan? They tried to see if it was Germany or some foreign country. But in their investigations, they realized that no foreign country could have had a technology like that because if they had technology like that, they could have easily did away with America. But they were trying to find out what was what was this superior object? What was it? Excuse us, brother, we can't see you anymore. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in their investigations, the only, all of their investigations, all of their intelligence, all of their military science and intelligence led to the only people talking about these things which was those Muslims that they called a voodoo cult because they were the only one on record talking about anything that matched what they encountered over Los Angeles. So right after the Battle of Los Angeles, about two and a half months into their investigation, they found and arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and as proof, here you have the most powerful government in the world who make countries bow down. But because she encountered a superior power, all, the, her investi all of their investigations led to the arrest of this one black man. They also arrested 80 other, 81 or 82 other members of the nation too. Yes, sir. But they arrested the leader the Honorable Elijah Muhammad from, as a result of a, an executive decision. This came from on high up, you see? And when the FBI arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they interrogated him. And in their interrogation, you know what they asked him about? 
the wheel. They admitted to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that they had encountered the wheel just a few months prior in Los Angeles. And they admitted, and the, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him exactly what it was and that he is the representative of that wheel. Mm. Now you have the FBI, the federal government admitting in secret now <laughs> that they know this plane exists. They know who represents the plane. They know it is directly connected to the nation of Islam and our leadership. They've always known that in secret, <laughs> you see? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about when the FBI arrested him and questioned him about the wheel. He talked about it several times. This time is in, uh, during the Theology of Time lecture series. He says, and I'm quoting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says, write in the paper if you want and tell the devil what I am telling you. See if he'll try to deny it. Talking about the devil. See if the devil will try to deny it. They know it's out there. Mm -hmm. Talking about the wheel. The messenger said, I sat down and I talked with them years ago about it. Talking about the FBI. They asked me questions. They have the drawing on a blackboard that they'd taken from us when they arrested us. Mm. And I had drawn the plane and written explanations on the blackboard. So the illustrations of the plane about the mother plane that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had drawn on the blackboard at the mosque, the FBI took that too. <laughs> the mess just saying they took it to the FBI office. They have it there today. They know this to be true, and they admitted to me that it is true. Now, this is what they told the on. This is what took place when they arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They weren't asking him about all this other nonsense. They asked him about the wheel. And as a result of that, knowing that he represents this power during the time that America was trying to execute a war. They decided to lock the Honorable Elijah Muhammad up. He was in prison for four, almost five years because they wanted to silence his voice. They needed to silence his voice so that they could initiate what has now become the worldwide UFO cover-up. The secret has always been the fact that the nation of Islam represents the true and living God who brought proof of his presence in that wheel. Mm. So while they arrested and locked up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they initiated their misinformation campaign so that when any time anybody else would see the wheel, they would try to explain it away. They would try to cover it up while they were always studying it and monitoring it in secret. Those in the highest echelons of government and military have always known that these planes of superior technology, of superior capabilities, are directly connected to the nation of Islam. Mm. And this is what's always in your scriptures. Your scriptures show us how God would show his power to his enemies, to the oppressor because he would give the enemy a chance and an opportunity to do right by proving to the enemy that he has a superior power greater than that of the oppressor. But most of the time, if we look at the scriptures, most of the time, the enemy, the oppressor, the ruling class, they don't submit even though they know God is on scene. They know God has a superior, superior power, but the mind of the devil will not allow them to submit. This is why Pharaoh, after seeing the power of God through the plagues, after seeing the power of God lead Moses and the children through what's described as a cloud by day and a, a pillar of fire by night, after seeing this power, Pharaoh and his people still had the gall to try to challenge God. That's what you see today in white America. That's what you see today in 
uh, Western European powers as it relates to the UFO phenomena. They know Elijah Muhammad and Farrakhan represent that power. So after they arrested, and I'm going to close this part down so we can do some question and answer. <laughs> so after they arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they initiated the disinformation campaign and the cover up, and they made everything related to UFO above top secret. So it's no surprise that today they are being forced to admit. I mean, look at it. They admit that they've been lying all this time. They are just now, this year, 2021, the government is just now admitting that these planes exist which shows that they've been outright lying and hiding the truth since the nation of Islam has been here, since at least 42, when they admitted to the honorable Elijah Muhammad that these planes are real. But everything the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught and the minister teaches about these planes have been confirmed in the real world. All of your cases, bear witness. I don't have time to go over these different cases, but just to kind of throw some out there, if you want to do some research, uh, consider checking out the Washington DC UFO incident of 1952, when some of the wheels were captured on film and seen by thousands or at least hundreds of citizens in the DC area flying over the nation's capital with impunity, letting you know who's in charge. We're talking about a mighty God, y'all, who revealed his secrets and pro has proven himself in the real world. This is not limited to some religious belief where I just believe because the scriptures say it. No, we're dealing with actual facts today, y'all. God has made himself known. So even if you don't even believe in God or don't even believe in the scriptures or the prophecies, hell, the actual facts and the evidence prove that Elijah Muhammad met the supreme being, proves that Farrakhan That's is right. empowered by and backed by the power of this real God in the real world. It's always been a issue your NASA astronauts have had to come forth. I'm reminded of Colonel Gordon Cooper, one of the most decorated astronauts in American history. He held to his dying day that these planes exist. And they exist the way he described them, just as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had taught before anybody else. But we don't even hear about Gordon Cooper caught on film, the wheels, caught on film, caught on NASA radar, caught Ooh. on Air Force radar. It's a presidential problem. All of the presidents since Franklin Delano Roosevelt have had to deal with this issue. I wish we had time. We could go over all of these. Let me cut that back on. <laughs> <laughs> we would go over all of these different things, but now you see where they are coming for. And I'm gonna end my part with one or two more slides. Uh, I'll end it with this slide right here. Because in summation, the big secret to the worldwide UFO phenomena has everything to do with the nation of Islam. That man, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, is the representative of that divine power on this earth. He is the official spokesperson, national representative of the power of that wheel. And those wheels, the same ones that have been seen and spotted again by NASA. So Allah asked us a question to see if we're gonna continue denying the proof that he's continually shown us. That's right. Allah says, and he shows you his signs. Which then of Allah's signs will you deny? That term signs comes from the word ayat, which literally means signs or evidential proof. Mm. You see? So which one of Allah's proofs and evidences, which one of these type of signs 
will you deny? Are you going to, are we going to deny the fact that the honorable Elijah Muhammad brought the 1000% truth that he did meet the Supreme being God in person and brought proof? Are you going to deny it just because the wheel didn't come directly to your house in your yes. backyard and dance for you and say, look, I'm the wheel. <laughs> Are we going to be that foolish to deny the clear proof and evidence just because it doesn't come in the package we want? That's right. We would be foolish. So well, thank you for that time. And let's go ahead. And I guess I could take some questions or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We all we all glued to the PowerPoint like this. <laughs> um, real quick, Brother Basir did have a question of um, where can we find like your PowerPoint or is there access to your PowerPoint that we can continue to go over and study? Well, these excerpts um, are taken from our book, you know, I just take little snatch little pieces from the book and put it up here. And I may have certain things posted. I may have something on my website, nationbrothers.com, but it wouldn't be this slide because these slides always change. If you come, uh, you come next week, I'll have something totally different right here. <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. But the truth is consistent. That's right. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we produce the book so that we can have all of this research documented and easy to find with the sources and citations listed. That's right. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So we're going to go into the first question. We have about 15 minutes. We probably going to cover a couple minutes over, but you know, in mm -hmm. master call true form, we'd be running over sometimes. So <laughs> um, it was one question in here that I really, really thought was Interesting. Where is it? Someone asked about, do you go there when, ha, here it is. What is the selection process for piloting the wheels? Will just NOI believers have access? Do we go there when we die, when we die or just if we make it to the hereafter? Is the mother will Jana? So it's like four questions in one. Yeah, that's about four or five questions yeah. all in one right there. What is, I think the first one, what's the selection process for piloting, for piloting the, wheels. the wheels? Yes, sir. Well, it's not just for anybody. Um, we're taught that those who pilot the wheels, they were selected by Allah. I don't know all the full criteria mm -hmm. of the selection process, but they were taught since they were children, that's very right. young ages somewhere around four, between four or six, something like that. They were very young when they started being taught. And of course they uh, were taught uh, under the tutelage of God in person and other scientists. So naturally these pilots and the, or the people that control these wheels, um, these are what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called scientists which is the same as what is known in the scriptures as, as angels. You see, that's interchangeable, scientists and angels. We don't believe angels are some spooky Cupid looking creatures with wings on their black and all of that crap that Hollywood has put in our mind. But angels are actually people, but they are people with certain abilities, certain intelligences and certain powers given to them by God to execute for his purposes. So these planes are uh, operated by scientists or angels. And this is congruent with what you read in the scriptures of both Bible and Quran. We read where God's heavenly throne is stationed in the heavens, but surrounding God's heavenly throne are his angels. Angels who sing praises to their Lord, angels who accompany God and his presence in his throne office, if you will. So everything the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught is very practical, you see? That's a, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you can't get spooked out with this. Look, this man taught that God came in person and this human God proved and showed him 
phenomenal planes made by humans on this earth that can fly in the sky. Now tell me anybody that you know of, of intelligence who would deny that human beings can make planes that fly in the sky. Who, who gonna deny that? So you would look stupid as hell if we, <laughs> we would look crazy as heck if we tried to deny and say Elijah Muhammad, that's crazy, y'all talking about some planes in the sky. No, it just so happens that the human built planes that we talk about are more superior than anything of conventional wisdom that's that right. the white man or anybody else, any other man has made. And the fact that these planes have been sighted by hundreds of millions all over the globe, and the fact that countless billions of taxpayer dollars are put into studying these planes, and the fact that the world's most powerful governments have admitted and confirmed everything Elijah Muhammad taught, mm. man, we would look so foolish trying to deny that. And that's, that's right. why you don't hear anybody even challenging us on the matter. No religious folk, no government personnel. They do everything to divert attention away from the truth of what we teach. You know, the anti-Semitic, y'all kill Malcolm. Uh, y'all don't believe in Jesus. Just anything stupid to deny, <laughs> to deny the provable real world truth presented by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Let me get to those other questions. Uh, do we go there when we die or something like that. No, we ain't, we're not into that spooky stuff. First of all, understand that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad nor the minister teach that the wheel is a place that all the believers are supposed to go to. Where, where do we even get that from? That's nothing. No, it serves a purpose. That's right. it's, like the, it's like the office space of God. If you do get to see it or go there, hey, that's a blessing. Mm. But the purpose of the wheel is to demonstrate the power of God, his healing power and his destructive power. Because mm. one day, and apparently it looks like it's going to be soon, the wisdom that's on that wheel will be here on this earth. That's, right. That's the whole point for us to take the wisdom, the instructions from the power of that wheel and implement it so that we can establish kingdom, Allah's kingdom here on this earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See how I did that? Thy will. I wish I had a tambourine. I, I got to get a tambourine. I do this on a master call all the time. And I don't hey. have a tambourine. I'm going to get one though. Um, the you did you answered that and the did you answer is the mother will jana jana which is basically heaven or paradise mm -hmm. in the holy quran the mother plane is an aspect of jana it is a type of heaven but that heaven the goal allah's goal is for that let me put it back on <laughs> the goal is for that wisdom to be applied on earth. But that wisdom, that heavenly paradise that is on currently on the wheel, it's not gonna be fully manifested here on earth until after the destruction of Satan's world, mm -hmm. which is the other purpose of that wheel. One is healing and peace forevermore. But the other part, it is a warship that is you will be used in the destruction of Satan's world because you can't establish peace on earth. You can't establish the kingdom of God on earth while Satan is still on earth cutting the food. Mm. <laughs> so his world has to fall first. So yes, it is Jana, but it's not just Jana. No, real Jana, real heaven on earth is gonna, is gonna be right here on this earth. And it starts uh, in our mind, because as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Farrakhan teach, heaven and hell are both conditions of mind and states of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praise to Allah. Our, I'm trying to think which ones. We'll probably be able to get a good 
because you're not long-winded i'll raise it to a last so <laughs> i try not to be I, I really am i'm just cutting <laughs> everything super short <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> um let's see do you know what the particular significance of building the will on japan and if being built there says and if, if being built there says something about some kind of particular importance of the japanese people well it's not necessarily all the japanese people <laughs> who were involved in its construction even though it did involve a lot of japanese people mm -hmm. the honorable elijah muhammad said that uh the construction of the plane took place with the four major uh, races of the original man, black, brown, or black, brown, red, yellow, something like that. It didn't include white, <laughs> in other words, you know, but it was the original people. Um, and remember, they were paid handsomely. So it's very likely that some may have been shipped in from other places. These are scientists, the best minds from around the world that were hired to do this awesome task. Now, does it being built in or near Japan have something to do with its awesomeness? <laughs> I don't think that where it was built, we know it was built on this earth. I don't think that's the main factor as to its superior capability. The primary uh, factor concerning the superiority of the wheel has to do with the mind behind its construction. Whether it was done in the desert, whether it was done, you know, in Memphis, whether it was in Plainfield, Sister mm. Anissa. Yes, sir. Um, I don't think that's as important. I'm certain it's important, but I don't yes. think it's as important as the mind and intelligence and wisdom that went into its construction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, our next one is, how would you explain in baby language the wheels to someone for the first time? I had someone ask after hearing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the first time during the criterion, and I answered their question, but I would like to hear how you would answer this. Explain it to the wheel. And I think I kind of hinted on it earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Muhammad proved that he met God because God showed him his aircraft mm -hmm. that's made like a wheel, consisting of a big one and a whole lot of smaller ones. They, they built by people on this earth. They were built on this earth, that's but right. they're planes that are far superior than anything that anybody in this world can think of. That's what the wheels are. That's mm. what have been now called UFOs. Again, I think that's a very plain way. Uh, you know, that's beyond baby language right there. Isn't it? It's very you clear. Know, <laughs> very clear. It, it, um, it's, 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 some, it's some real, real, real smart and powerful people that made planes that are better and more superior than the planes that we're used to. And right. Elijah Muhammad knew the main person behind the construction of those planes. Just happens to be God himself. Just happens to be, oh my <laughs> God, Allah. <laughs> the supreme being. Yes, sir. Um, this is another question from the audience. Do the baby planes differ in size? Oh, this is a good question, but I thought the same thing. Do the baby planes differ in size? I seems, I've seen sightings that have shown variation in shapes. In a sense, it looks like they increase in size with ranking. <laughs> oh, and pardon me, he also included uh, increase in size with ranking, and, and he referenced the ranks of the Nation of Islam as well in terms of our military. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a heck of an observation. That's Sister Jadaya. <laughs> Sister Jadaya, at your service. The question came from Brother Basir. Okay, appreciate you. you well, the, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad described, he just mentioned that they are made like a wheel. He mentioned that they are spherical. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that they were all the same size. He didn't say that they all look just alike. He gave us the delineations and the descriptions of what they can do. 
He said that a plane shape, this wheel shape can fly in any direction at any time. Mm. He told us how fast they can go. He says it's, you can, they can go so fast that you can blink and they'll be gone. You know, he said that they can go anywhere in space or wherever that they like, that they want. This is the power of a real God. But the thing is, we have to always remember that all of this is proof, real world proof that Elijah Muhammad met God. We cannot run away from that. That's what everybody is running away from. That's why they don't want to deal with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan on this topic. Hell, they won't even deal with me as his student. On this, that's right. You know? Sorry, somebody. <laughs> please keep your phones muted, family. It'll be much appreciated. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but I think we uh, pretty much answered that one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so then we have another question from our Google Doc, which is also from our audience. Um, I feel like you answered that one. Let's go to the first one. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Black men are the crew of the mother plane. Why are the grays, I guess they're talking about aliens, <laughs> the grays given the credit even, th even by those that have claimed to be abducted or contacted by the crew of the mother plane or baby planes? That is part of the disinformation campaign. Mm. In order to keep the public from knowing that these planes are directly associated with the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because if people associate these planes with the source of these planes, then they would have no other choice but to submit and bear witness that Allah came in the person of Master Fadr Muhammad. So since that's the main reason why the UFO topic has been kept above top secret is so that they can sway the public into believing that these planes are anything other than what they truly are. So after they arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 42, that's when they really initiated. That's actually the official UFO cover up when it starts. Um, after that time, they started flooding the movies in Hollywood with flying saucer UFO type related movies, all of which depict UFOs as being something of extraterrestrial origin or of some alien origin or even some monstrous enemy mm. that we need to be aware of, you know? All of that was part of, the, is part of the disinformation campaign. Uh, and this is why to this day, even though the Nation of Islam is on record, on government record and on academic record as being the first to teach about these crafts and remains the only entity to give definitive details about them, even though that's on record. Black screen. Uh oh. <laughs> Thank you. Even though we are on record for showing and proving that, you'll find that none of the mainstream journalists, none of the government officials, none even of the so-called UFO researchers, the big ones, they won't even question us. They won't even critique us. They don't even want to deal with us. You know, the minister um, years ago uh, told me to see if I can, you know, see if I can, you know, let contact some of these UFO people to let them know that we in the nation, look, if you really want to know about UFO disclosure, we would be your best ally, mm. you know, but I noticed that most 90, 97 plus percent of my efforts have, you know, been rejected mm. by those type of uh, 
UFO researchers. So it's expected because the truth that we have, it debunks all of their lies. They That's make right. a whole lot of money from their documentaries, from their books, from their movies, by keeping the UFO topic a mystery. As long as they can keep it a mystery and have people believe in its aliens, they can make continue making a hell of a lot of money. Well, heck of a lot of money, excuse me, I'll get excited. But so by having us come to the table and prove exactly what these are and demystify, we take all the mystery out, mm. you know? Man, that messes up their whole game. So just my, my little book alone, a freaking game changer, mm. <laughs> a game changer. Look, I tell people all the time, I'm a dude that literally failed school three times and had to go to summer school just to graduate on time. The minister has taken a dude like that that barely made it out of high school and has used somebody like me to put world scholars to flight. You know, oh, no. I we have world scholars afraid to deal with the truth that I've been blessed to compile on behalf of the minister. So we know beyond doubt that what we have is the actual fact and all of it just proves that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad met God in person. That's right. And yes. you know what? I don't know. We are almost over time, but we got one more question from Dr. Wesley anyway. So, <laughs> okay, great, great. Oh, well, I would just make the point that this is why world religions run from us too, because all of the major world religions and their faith traditions and their scriptures depict God and his angels in the exact manner that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Farrakhan represent. Mm. All of the scriptures depict God operating from some type of heavenly vehicle that flies in the sky. Mm. Whether it's called a New Jerusalem, the city of the living God above, also described as the mother of us all. <laughs> mm -hmm whether it's described as a God's throne, which is like his office space, whether it's described as God's fly, uh, flying chariots, mm. whether it's described as his chariots of fire, described as clouds by day and pillar of fires by night, whether it's described in the Holy Quran as uh, al istiwa al-Arsh, Allah's establishment upon his throne of power, mm. this same throne, that would be seen, where the angels would be seen round about it. <laughs> Allah's throne in the Quran that was seen over the waters. Mm. Oh, hold up, you mean the Muslim world and the God of the Holy Quran, the Allah of the Holy Quran has some type of physical space that he resides? How mm. Allah gonna be over the waters if he's not in some type of form. See, the religious world, look, if the scientific world run from us, we know the religious world ain't trying to hear us. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. I would just say that, you know, that with all of these scriptures, all of these faith traditions, whose scriptures prove to you and show you that God would come, that God would appear in human form and as proof of his presence he would be accompanied with his vessels mm -hmm. that fly in the sky his wheel as seen in ezekiel his prophecy god a man god on a throne amidst this wheel that flies in the sky followed by other little wheels that were lifted from the earth man all your scriptures talk about god in this manner Yet none of the religious folk believe in God in that manner, except mm. the nation of Islam. So when you want to know the truth about the UFO phenomena, I'll come see us. That's right. <laughs> Appreciate you, sis. Right. And then do you have time for one more question? We have one from our illustrious Dr. Wesley. Um, he asked the question. 
Wow. When we as believers see the changes in colors, would you consider that we could be given signs from the baby plane as the minister receives? Man, when we, if, if what he's referring to is one of many occasions when the minister has seen wheels, I'm reminded of in the early 90s when he was overseas and the wheels started projecting colors to the minister, uh, indicating the moves that he should make. And the minister, in communicating that to the minister, I think the wheels turn red and green, letting the minister know when he should leave and when he should go. And this is also a common uh, descriptor in many of the sightings and cases of the wheel. In fact, in, I think in the book of Ezekiel, it's described in one sense as having different colors, sapphire here and mm -hmm. beryl there and all of these. So these are glimmering, very beautiful, different colors that can be projected. And not only can the colors being emitted from the wheel tell us something, but more importantly, the representative of that wheel has been That's telling it. us something, you know, and so many people, and I'm so glad Dr. Wesley uh, brought that up because so many people, even believers, we often think that the wheel has to do some stuff in order to, you know, for us to understand the power. No, God is real. That's right. He has an official representative here. You know, that's like the uh, doctor. I'll leave, put, try to use this analogy. You know, doctor can give you a prescription and that prescription is known to heal our your problem. But we would be real crazy if we expected the doctor to come to our house and make the prescription drug mm. right then and there give it to us, feed it to us and all that. No, that's unrealistic. What's realistic is for the doctor, even if you even didn't see the doctor not, if the doctor know your symptoms and he provided the prescription for you, you take the prescription and apply it based on how it's been recommended, based that's on right. the prescription. Well, we don't have to wait on the wheel to come and do something and make an announcement. Bam, 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 bam. I am a scientist on the wheel and I want you, man, please. That's unrealistic and it's spooky. That's right. Because the power of that wheel literally has an official representative in the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, who is the spokesman that he is the voice of the power on that wheel. And so if we're not even going to listen to the prescription and abide by the prescription of its rep representative, then hell, we we wouldn't bear witness no way. And That's Allah right. tells us over and over in the Quran about those who think like that. And they was like that then with the prophets and it's like that now. Some of them said that we're still not going to believe after Allah would give signs and signs and proofs and proofs many of the people said, we're still not going to believe until we see your God manifestly. Mm. No, despite all the mathematical and scientific proof and evidence and statistical data and every we're other like kind of, <laughs> and every other kind of uh, data and proof, some people still won't believe and they'll make the same excuse as those in the Quran and be like, well, I ain't going to believe unless I see your God or see a wheel come to my door. Mm. You know, so uh, I look, I haven't been to, I haven't been to China just because I haven't been to China. Does that, and seen China for myself, does that mean China don't exist? You know, no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. so look, we would, it takes more energy to try to disbelieve in the actual facts presented by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad than it would to just accept the plain truth. That's right. So again, I appreciate you big time, Sister Nisa, and all the rest of the crew. Thank you all. Appreciate you, Dr. Wesley, man. That's <laughs> that's my, hey, that's the man there, boy. That's my brother. <laughs> that's the man Look, there, boy. 
when it comes to research, that brother is a beast for real. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Oh, Wesley, wow. man. Look, that's my brother there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And we're going to need a part two as well. We have several other questions that we could not even scratch the surface <laughs> of. I still got questions in the um in here and we got a whole bunch of questions um, from the, the viewing audience. So inshallah, we can have you back for a part two. The master Zoom call is forever, y'all home. We have adopted everybody, brother Kiyam, uh, sister Ava, um, who else? Brother Talib, brother Rasul. We've adopted everybody <laughs> on this Man. call. Oh God, Imam Sultan. So y'all got the heavy hitters. Huh? Y'all got the heavy hitters. I'm look, we I'm try. just glad to be amidst that wondrous <laughs> number. Yes, sir. We are trying, we are tri striving our best to stay on course in the mix of this panoramic that we are in. We are doing our best to stay on course. What's that? This is, of course, is our book, UFOs and the Nation of Islam. If you've not had the opportunity to check it out, <clears throat> This is the book that's the game changer that has put the scholars, put all of them to flight. They don't, they don't want to see us. So um, it's available on our website, nationbrothers.com. It's also available on Amazon for right now until they censor that too. <laughs> oh, Allah. Can somebody please put that in the chat as well? Nation bro Nations Brothers or Nation Brothers? Nation Brothers. Dot Thank you, Sister Aisha. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Brother Ilya Rashad. May Allah continue to bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you. For, thank you and um, Student Minister Dr. Wesley for a beautiful day one Man. of the one year anniversary of the Master Zoom call tomorrow. Oh, and also if you and Dr. Wesley can um, give us your cash apps, that would be great because we are a very giving and loving group of people. Um, look at on. you, look at you. <laughs> so if Dr. Wesley can put his um, cash app, if he's still in the room, if you could put your cash app in the chat. And Brother Ilya Rashad, if, I don't know, are you available to use your chat or should I, I type um, I, look, as much as I'm on conferences and stuff, for some reason, I don't use Zoom as much. <laughs> so I'm over uh, here scrolling with the mouse, trying to find my stuff. <laughs> But my, my cash app is the dollar sign Ilya Rashad. I mean, it's I L I A R A S H A D. Praise me so long. And I was hoping we could get Dr. Wesley's in there too. Oh, well, I'll probably DM him for it and then post it up on, the, on my story or something <laughs> so that we could. Give y'all um, our appreciation Man. for your time and a love offering because we do love the believers and we love everybody that comes on this call so, so much for y'all taking y'all time because that is something that you can't get back is the time that you have. So um, we appreciate you sharing that with us and inshallah sharing that with us for a part two. And may Allah continue to bless you, bless you, bless you and your family and your daughter, Sister Tarika, which I just found out is your baby girl last night. Yes, oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's um, my little spoiled girl. I love her. I love oh, her. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's, she's a she's a blessing. She's a doll. She's so cute. So oh oh, I see. Oh, and also our sister Kim. Almost forgot our sister Kim, who has been signing the whole <laughs> entire time. She has been doing her thing. Her cash app has just been put into the chat as well. Thank you so, so much, Sister Kim. May Allah bless you and put those fingers in some oil and water, warm water, something, honey, because I just don't know how you do it, okay? That's carpal tunnel. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for joining, and we will close out in our Muslim closing prayer. Um, Brother Darren, can you close us out? We have Brother Demetrius open us up. And Brother oh, Darren, Thank you, prayer.
iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladina an'amtu alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim waladdallin oh allah we ask for an increase in knowledge wisdom understanding and power that we may put to a perpetual flight satan your enemy our enemy and the enemy of humanity grant us a triple portion of your spirit we pray this prayer in the name of the exalted christ mahdi the most honorable elijah muhammad and in the name of the messiah in our midst the honorable brother minister louis farrakhan bearing witness that there is no god but allah who came in the person of master far muhammad to whom praises are forever due amen amen Thank you all. Inshallah, we will see each other tomorrow for our beautiful brother, Minister Nori, is tomorrow on the Joshua generation overcoming the Satan of self. May Allah continue to bless you all. And assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam.